BestBookBits.com presents Buddha's Brain, The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love, and Wisdom by Rick Hansen. If you change your brain, you can change your life. Great teachers like Buddha, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, and Gandhi were all born with brains built essentially like anyone else's. And then they changed their brains in ways that changed the world. Science is now revealing how the flow of thoughts actually sculpts the brain. And more and more, we are learning that it's possible to strengthen positive brain states. By combining breakthroughs in neuroscience with insights from thousands of years of mindfulness practice, you too can use your mind to shape your brain for greater happiness, love, and wisdom. Buddha's brain draws on the latest research to show how to stimulate your brain for more fulfilling relationships, a deeper spiritual life, and a greater sense of inner confidence and worth. Using guided meditations and mindfulness exercises, you learn how to activate the brain states of calm, joy, and compassion instead of worry, sorrow, and anger. Most importantly, you will foster positive psychological growth that will literally change the way you live in your day-to-day life. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Buddha's Brain. There is no wrong way to a meditation. The right way is what feels right to you. If I know one thing for sure, it's that you can do small things inside your mind that will lead to big changes in your brain and your experience of living. What flows through your mind sculpts your brain. What flows through your mind sculpts your brain. Thus, you can use your mind to change your brain for the better, which will benefit your whole being and every other person whose life you touch. I've already experienced the positive change that happens after meditative practice. A lot of times, change happens without me really noticing it consciously. If you want to get good at anything, it helps to study those who have already mastered that skill such as top chefs on TV, if you like to cook. Therefore, if you like to feel more happiness, inner strength, clarity, and peace, it makes sense to learn from contemplative practitioners, dedicated lay people, and monastics who've really pursued the cultivation of these qualities. Our brain has two major neural systems, which keeps us chasing carrots. The first one is dopamine-based, which the effect of us wanting to repeat things that gave us rewards in the past. The second system is based on several other neuromodulators, endorphins, oxytocin, and neuropronephrine. These strengthen the neural circuits that are active, making them more likely to fire together in the future. Having desires can feel great, but desiring in itself can be unpleasant experience, as the book states. Even mild longing is subtly uncomfortable. When you do fulfill a desire, the rewards that follow are often not that great. They're okay, but look closely at your experience. Is the cookie really that tasty, especially after the third bite? One reason meditation makes us happier is because it helps us overcome these stronger longings that prevent us from being happy. The brain typically detects negative information faster than positive information. It's easy to acquire feelings of learned helplessness from a few failures, but hard to undo those feelings, even with many successes. People will do more to avoid a loss than to acquire a comparable gain. The simulator in our brains. Simulation makes us suffer. What? Yes, it turns out our brains developed over 3 million years the capability to simulate the future. That's why we don't have to get hit by a car first to know that we should watch out before crossing the street. That ability of our brains is great, but it also pulls us out of the present moment by its very nature. There you are, trying to concentrate at your work or to meditate, but your mind keeps caught in these mini mind movies. In sum, the simulator takes you out of the present moment and sets you chasing after carrots that aren't really so great while ignoring the more important rewards, such as contentment and inner peace. Self-compassion. Self-compassion isn't self-pity, but is simply warmth, concern, and good wishes, just like compassion for another person because self-compassion is more emotional than self-esteem. It's actually more powerful for reducing the impact of difficult conditions, preserving self-worth, and building resilience. Leary, etc. 2007, it also opens your heart, since when you're close to your own suffering, it's hard to be receptive to suffering in others. The dance we throw ourselves. This concept was very interesting to me. I figured it to be so true in my own experience. Let me explain what first and second darts are. First darts are painful experiences we have. Some are very useful, like pain we feel when we touch a hot stove. 
That pain protects us from a bad burn, but second darts are entirely of our own choosing. It is how we react to our experiences. It is how we react to our experiences. They are ironically the ones that make us suffer most, not our initial experiences. In relationships, second darts create vicious cycles. Your second dart reactions trigger reactions from the other person, which set off more darts from you and so on. Remarkably, most of our second dart reactions occur when there is, in fact, no first dart anywhere to be found. When there's no pain inherent in the conditions we're reacting to, we add suffering to them. And sadness of all, some second dart reactions are conditions that are actually positive. Like if someone pays you a compliment, that's a positive situation. But then you might start thinking with some nervousness and a little shame. Oh, I'm not really that good of a person. Maybe they'll find out if I'm a fraud. Right there, needless, second dart suffering begins. The Balanced Brain. One of the things I most liked about the book is how it explains in very scientific terms the way our brain works. For instance, the amygdala is the part of the brain that produces a lot of suffering if not balanced by other parts of the brain like the prefrontal cortex or the anterior cingulate cortex hub, ACC. Strengthening the ACC, such as through meditation, helps you think more clearly when you're upset and brings warmth and emotional intelligence to your logical reasoning. Understanding equanimity, something you gain with meditation. With equanimity, what passes through your mind is helped with spaciousness so you can stay even killed and aren't thrown off balance. The ancient circuitry of the brain is continually driving you to react one way or another. Equanimity is your circuit breaker. With equanimity, situations have only characteristics, not demands. Equanimity is neither apathy nor indifference. You are warmly engaged with the world, but not troubled by it. Well, I'm still amazed about this concept. It is something. I don't want to obtain more of it. I've had several experiences where I react very different now than I did before starting to meditate. I guess that's some equanimity in action. Mindfulness. Awareness are neural patterns in your brain that are highly variable, but the basis of the subject experience of awareness are generally very stable. Consequently, resting in awareness brings a beautiful sense of inner clarity and peace. Through mindfulness practice, you can strengthen your mental ability of staying in awake and alert, but quiet and peaceful mind. In essence, mindfulness is well-controlled attention. And that's a wrap on Buddha's Brain Summary. Check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for over 400 video book summaries. And check out our website, bestbookbits.com, for all the written summaries you can download through a PDF version in categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationships, sales, spirituality, success, time management. If you're into audio podcasts, check out mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits for over 400 audio podcast book summaries. And for daily motivational and book summary posts, check out our Instagram channel, Best Book Bits. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you got something from Buddha's Brain Summary. Stay tuned for more and have a great day. Take care.